Our second scripture lesson today comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, beginning with verse 1. I invite you now to listen for the word of God. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. I want you to picture in your minds the night sky. But not just any old night sky. Picture it on the night when you can see the most stars. One of those nights when you were out in the middle of nowhere and you looked up at the sky and you could see the Milky Way wrapping around the earth. Can you see it? Picture it in your heads. And then, then I want you to look through the sky and I want you to find the constellation that all of us know the best, the Big Dipper. See it? Can you find it? All right, as you're looking at the Big Dipper, you see its handle and then it goes down into the cup. And there's two stars that make its handle before it it curves like this. And that second star, that second star right in the constellation, that star is called Mizar. And if you go out and you look at that star on or around the date of your 78th birthday, that'll be what it looked like the day you were born. That's how long it takes that star's light to get to us here on Earth. And that star, Mizar, is the closest star to us in all of the Big Dipper. When we go out and we look at the sky, we don't see it as it is today, but instead we see it as it was 78 years ago, 1,500 years ago, 30,000 years ago, however long it takes for the light from all those stars to reach us here, that's what we see. It's like the best form of time travel. We can go out and we can look up every single night and we can see what was. And I think, I think when we come here, especially when we come here on Easter Sunday, I think that's what we're looking for. We're looking for just that faintest little light that has made it through all the ages and arrived here, today, where we can see it. That light that has made it through all the centuries before, through all the things that have happened in our lives, through all the other days that has made it down to this day. And we can look, and if we look quite closely, if we look just closely enough, we feel like maybe, maybe we can get the faintest glimmer of what was. Maybe, just maybe, We can see the world with Jesus in it. I took a trip not that long ago to Israel, and I saw a lot of things in Israel. And one of the things that I saw was a church called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is one of the most famous churches in all of the world. It's in this church that it is believed is contained both Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified, and the tomb where he was put to rest, are both thought to be inside this church. And so when you walk into the Holy Sepulchre, one of the first things you see, one of the first things I saw 
was a big piece of stone coming up out of the floor, and there were people all around it, all over it. They were touching it. Some were even trying to kiss it. Some were praying. Some were getting their heads, their faces as close to this stone as they possibly could because that stone, that stone tradition holds, was where Jesus was laid after they took him off the cross right after he had died. And people had come from all over the world to get close to that stone just so they could be as close as they physically could get to Jesus and where he was. Even the women, the women who had just seen him, they had just lived with him, they had seen him up on the cross, they had seen him die, and yet still, Still, they wanted to get as close to him as they could. So naturally, what did they do? They went to the tomb. They went to anoint his body at the tomb. It's almost like it's instinctive within us to try to get as close as we can to the physical presence of Jesus in this world. And maybe we come here today especially today, hoping that we'll feel a little bit closer. Now there's another place in Israel that I want to tell you about. This place is called the Garden Tomb. And there are some people who think that this is the actual tomb where Jesus laid and that here is the actual place where Golgotha was. Because if you've ever been to Israel, we can't have just one tomb where Jesus was buried. We have to have more than one tomb where Jesus was buried. That's the way things work. So now you know. So we went to both. So we go to the garden tomb, and it is literally a garden. It is a beautiful, beautiful garden right in the middle of the eastern part of Jerusalem. You go in off of the bustling city streets, and you're in this kind of quiet peaceful place. They have beautiful plants and trees and places to sit and places to have communion, which we did as our group. And you can go and you can see and they say, you know, this tomb, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but this tomb is almost certainly exactly like the tomb Jesus was placed in. And you can go in and and you duck inside and you go in and you see the stone walls and you feel the coldness of the room. And then as you leave, As you leave the garden tomb through the gift shop, as you leave the garden tomb, the only exit, the only way out, there are words written on the door. And the words are these. He is not here. He is risen. See, sometimes we spend so much time looking for Jesus in the past that we can forget that he is here with us today. Easter is not for us a day to see how close we can get to the Jesus that was. It is a day that reminds us that we worship a Jesus Christ who is, who is in this world, who is in our lives, who is here in this body of believers. We worship a Christ who is here. When we look for him amongst the tombstones, we are looking in the wrong place. We worship a Jesus who is alive. What reasonable person would walk out on a beautiful, clear night, look up and see thousands of stars in the sky, and not feel as if all those stars were right here? Who would look out and look at those stars and start thinking, well, I wonder how long it took that one to get here, and I wonder how long it took that one to get here. No, we go out into a moment when all the light from all the universe has converged on us in this space and it'll never look that way again and we see the stars in the sky and we are filled with awe and with wonder. And that is what we find here today. Easter Sunday, 
The Sunday when we mark the emptiness of the tomb, the resurrection of Jesus, we find awe and wonder. And we are reminded every single year that Jesus Christ is present right now in our lives. He is present right now in your life. Asking you things, giving you strength, challenging you, calling you forward, drawing you closer to your brothers and sisters in Christ. That is what we mark. Jesus Christ is here. He is risen and he lives today and all days with us. Amen.